If the immorality of gun grabbing and the insults of gun grabbing politicians who lack the integrity to define their intentionally opaque government pushing terms like assault weapons aren't enough for you to blow a proverbial mental gasket, then this new set of revelations, though unsurprising, they might just do the trick. Hi everyone, I'm Gardner Goldsmith for MRC TV. You know, just two weeks ago, I reported that Virginia Congressman Don Beyer, the Democrat, had proposed a 1,000% excise tax on the sale of that magically amorphous category of firearm called assault weapon. And in the report, I noted, quote, as Tactical Gear points out, in 1994, the federal government forced its own arbitrary and, in some respects, ambiguous definition onto a whole host of firearms that previously were not considered by actual gun owners to be assault rifles. Ah, yes, get everyone arguing about definitions when the principle will be overlooked. And now, as they push for the reinstatement and expansion of the so-called assault weapons ban, which passed in the House at the end of July, both Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi are muddying the waters even more with demonstrably spurious and nonsensical claims about the purported salutary effects of that very wonderful 1994 to 2004 assault weapons ban. Emily Miller gets things started, writing for the Epoch Times, quote, Supporters of the bans are calling their assertions facts in an effort to mislead the public. Lawrence Keene, senior vice president and general counsel of the National Shooting Sports Foundation, NSSF, told the Epoch Times, Many of the Democratic members of Congress were purposefully misleading in their assertions that the 1994 assault weapons ban reduced crime. The level of willful ignorance would be comical if the effects of what they are trying to do wasn't so blatantly unconstitutional. Unconstitutional and immoral. It should be stressed that even if the U.S. Constitution were amended to allow for armed agents of the tax-funded state to point their guns at Americans and force them to turn over their personal firearms or to not acquire any firearms, such activity would be immoral and justifying defensive violence on the part of the rights retaining citizen. And on the bald faced falsehoods, Biden and Pelosi are spreading them wildly. Miller continues saying, quote, during that time, 1994 to 2004, we witnessed gun crime with assault weapons drop by up to 40%, Pelosi said on the House floor during the recent debate. <laughs> well, that's not very true at all. Quote, the number of murders with rifles actually increased slightly when the ban went into effect. John R. Lott Jr., the president of crime research, told the Epoch Times, referring to data from the FBI's annual release of reports from law enforcement agencies on homicides by weapon type. Lott also pointed out that no one collects data on all crimes committed with so-called assault weapons. Oh, hold on. Nancy Pelosi pushed misleading information? How could that possibly be? Adds Miller, quote, While Pelosi makes it sound like there's a grave risk of being killed by a rifle, it's actually a rare crime. Lott has reported that the percentage of firearm murders with any type of rifles was 4.8% prior to the ban starting in September 1994. During the 10-year so-called ban, homicide by rifle was 4.9% of all murders. Then, rifle homicides dropped by 3.6% after the ban expired in 2004. Hold on! Wait a minute! How could rifle homicides decrease after the magical ban ended? That, that's got to be completely wrong. And as Congressman Thomas Massey, Republican of Kentucky, has noted on the House floor, people found ways to possess the core assault weapons during the ban. Massey points out that the number actually doubled 
a point that Mr. Keene also observes, quote, ownership of these so-called assault weapons increased during the ban. Keene, the powerful gun lobbyist, pointed out that during the ban, what his organization calls modern sporting rifles continued to be legally manufactured and sold if they did not have two of the cosmetic features necessary for the rifle to be banned. Adds Miller, quote, Biden also said on June 2nd, in the 10 years it was law, mass shootings went down. But after Republicans let the law expire in 2004 and those weapons were allowed to be sold again, mass shootings tripled. Those are the facts. But an Epic Times investigation into mass shootings showed that they are extremely rare and went up and down during the time period in question. As you can see in this graphic, you can see it in the original Epic Times piece and share it with your friends, there was no pattern of mass shootings in that 10-year period. The White House press office did not respond to a request for the source of the president's data. I'm so shocked. But it gets worse for Biden and Pelosi. Quote, Pelosi echoed Biden with her own statistic, saying in a speech that, since the ban expired, the number of mass shooting deaths has grown by nearly 500%. That's not true. Mass public shootings with assault weapons in the 10 years after the ban sunset increased to six compared to the four that occurred in the 10 years during the ban, Lott reported in his analysis. He also reports that total mass public shootings increased between those two 10-year periods, almost doubling. But the increase occurred with non-assault weapons. If Pelosi's claim is correct, we should see a drop in the percent of attacks with assault weapons during the federal ban period, and then an increase in the post-ban period. But the exact opposite is true, said Lod, the author of the new book, Gun Control Myths. And foremost among those myths is that anybody has a right to threaten you with government guns in order to stop you from possessing a firearm for self-defense. Now, on the reality side, there's another consideration. The fact that gun bans, like other forms of prohibition, don't work. And of course, there's the fact that, as John Lott often points out, Criminals avoid places where they have a high expectation that their targeted victims might actually carry firearms. More guns in civilian possession equates to lower crime, as I've reported in depth for MRC TV. As Miller points out, the rhetorical barrage from Pelosi and Biden harkens back to a fantasy of their own creation. The truth is, God grants us the right to self-defense, period. Those people engage in acts of aggression when they push these kinds of unconstitutional and, moreover, immoral pieces of legislation. And no amount of wordplay can hide that truth. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Please make sure you like and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube or if you're watching on Rumble. And if you're on Rumble, thank you for joining us there. We've been seeing the numbers skyrocketing, and that is a wonderful thing. On Rumble, if you hit the little plus sign, it helps push our video up in the algorithm, so that can help us out a lot. And help out the Media Research Center in its 35th year. Go to mrctv.org and visit the Media Research Center store and check out some of the great items there, because by buying something, you help keep the Media Research Center going. You can find us on TikTok, on Twitter, on Instagram. The Facebook page is jumping. And on Twitter, I am at Guard Goldsmith. And on Gab, I'm at Guard Gardner Goldsmith. So thanks so much for watching, everybody. Really appreciate finding all you kindred spirits. I'll see you in the comments section for MRC TV. I'm Gardner Goldsmith. <laughs>